Vancouver. Lovely sunny Vancouver. No, really it is. <laughs> not taking the piss. It is a Was. Was. Uh, how are you guys? Good? Alright. I'm here to discuss anything that you would like to talk about. Except... Anybody got any questions? <laughs> I'd like to have that start off. Mr. Urban, sir. That's good. She feels I wasn't in the second Star Trek movie enough. <laughs> <laughs> As to the content of it, I don't know, but it's been very, very interesting actually to see uh, the feedback on, uh, online, on the, on, on the websites and stuff. And uh, you know, I certainly think that the writers have you know, taken a good look at that, and uh, we'll see. But you know, I've not really kind of uh, really happy with how, how these films are progressing. And, and, and to me, it's like you know, we're just at the beginning of, of this story. You know? The crew is just at the beginning of their five-year mission. The triumvirate has just been born, so you know I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, to see where they take it from here. I guess it's pretty exciting. <laughs> you can uh, write emails to Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman. Go on. If, if you want more McCoy, this is down the commands to say get on uh, on, the, on the internet and. Um, you know, champion the cause, I guess. <laughs> I'm actually really happy with it, you know, because there's more of me in the movie. I've got to go to work, work for more days. <laughs> no, I love work. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, no, seriously, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> there is a mic right in this young, these two young, lovely, lovely ladies' hands right here. So if you'd like to uh, put up your hand, get your microphone. Can hear you. Welcome to my panel. Take a seat, relax. I think we got this under control. Next question. Hi, I just wanted to know what the thought process was when you were offered the role. What the thought process was? <laughs> she could make a million jokes right now. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, I, I didn't really read too many comics uh, growing up. But two, two that I did read. One was um, Frank Miller's uh, Batman Dark Knight Returns, and the other was Dread. And when I heard that they were rebooting um, Dread, uh, I was intrigued. Uh, I would necessarily define myself as a huge fan of the first movie. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, uh, I asked to see a script and I read the script and I just thought it was fantastic. It was just a really action-packed, contained, wonderful day in the life of Dread as it puts his rookie Anderson through her paces. So from there I um, went and met with uh, the writers and the producer and the director and and they said to me, look, you're aware that Dredd doesn't take his helmet off. And I said, I wouldn't be taking this meeting if I read a script and Dredd took his helmet off. And it was just the most amazing experience making that movie. I just had, I was working in South Africa uh, and uh, just had an absolute blast. And I, I couldn't be more proud of that film. I really couldn't. I think it turned out so well. And, you know, even though it didn't quite do the numbers that it should have at the box office, and that was fundamentally due to the fact that there was a lack of awareness, um, sadly. Uh, but what happened on DVD, when it went to sell the DVD and it sold something like 650,000 copies in the first week, it was just, it was really wonderful. I think it was just a wonderful kind of validation for, um, for everybody involved in the project, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. You are the I am. I am. Oh. <laughs> 
and to know that you guys enjoy what I do and the fact that, uh, that I enjoy the fact that you like what I do. So thank you. <laughs>
you know, internationally, we, I think, double what the first one did. It's just, you know, it's kind of wonderful that I get that very essence and spirit of, of what Gene Roddenberry created back in the 60s is still alive. And um, I think fundamentally, you know, part of Star Trek, um, it's about striving to be the best that we, you know, that humans can be, uh, amongst other things. And I, I think there are a lot of really wonderful attributes and qualities that, that Star Trek stands for. And I always enjoyed watching it because, you know, to me it was more like a cult personality of science fiction. I just love how these characters who didn't always, you know, necessarily get along with each other uh, had to learn to work together in order to defeat a common adversary. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't be more thrilled that, that, um, that this is sort of, this sort of after the hours of latest, uh, you know, this iteration of Star Trek has been so embraced and I'd love to keep coming back and continue to be a part of it.
Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, but many of you may have been on the new show with JJ Abrams and Joe Lyon. We're almost human. And we're uh, six of uh, 40, 46 years in the future, and it's really the stories about uh, this relationship between a human detective, played by myself, and his synthetic partner, his robot partner, played by Mike Neely. And, uh, you know, really, the, the show is, you know, it's fundamentally about the relationship. It's also taking a look at, you know, what it means to be human. Uh, just in, in the near future, and, and it's really interesting because the technologies that we showcase, um, you know, on the show have all been researched at just around the corner, and it's really exciting stuff. And you know, and, you know, our, our, our aim is to deliver a really action-packed, visceral, heartwarming show with characters that characters care about, and, and for most of it, it's really fun. And we're uh, having a blast doing it. So, but maybe all it is. Um, I'd like to invite you all right now to watch it. <laughs> At my house. <laughs> yeah. That's very crazy. <laughs> Thanks for that. So I could be more fair. Uh, there was a commercial week a lot of years ago. Ben Affleck, ladies and gentlemen. Time to actually learn how to do them before 